Hey, James, how are you? I'm very well, Vaughn. How are you today? I'm very well. I'm digging your excellent backdrop, sir. That's excellent. right. It's our own personal red carpet. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, I really, I really, really enjoyed Cellar Door. Uh, so much so that it stuck with me for about a week after I finished watching it. Uh, you know, mainly because it was a great movie, but I was trying to figure out where I had seen this story before or heard this story before, not necessarily in another film, but just sort of in general. And I woke up one morning and it hit me that whether intentional or not, it reminded me of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Um, you know, they're given this, they're given this house as their garden, this beautiful house. They're told by Lawrence Fishburne, you know, the devil to not touch the apple being the cellar door. So was it that kind of aspect that drew you to the picture in the first place not necessarily the religious undertones i mean i could be way off base there but you know that sort of faustian bargain uh, you know i love stories like that w was that kind of what drew you to the picture yeah absolutely james uh, and you hit the nail on the head that was a big touch point on a sort of glow you know on a global overview of themes and, and motifs that yeah the 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 garden of eden was was a big one for us and i think it was i mean that faustian bargain that deal with the devil right that seductive beguiling devilish character making an offer you can't refuse like i i really responded to that and i you're you're absolutely spot on it it is it is that story of temptation right and it's it's that through line through so much you know that, that runs through movies and music and film and, and 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 literature you know it's that that idea of what would you do if you're presented with that Faustian bargain, can't we, if you're offered a deal with the devil for everything you want for that little price of your soul, like, would you do it? Would you take it? And I, for me, like, I, I love lean and mean scripts. I the, remember the first time I read Celador, I was like, yeah, that, that hook, that, that sort of folkloric quality, it has that dark fairy tale. I was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is really good. This is very special. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, you know, now that we're talking about it and I'm thinking about those influences on the film, it's sort of like there's a flood coming to me now. I can kind of see shades of uh, the telltale heart in there. Um, oh, my goodness. You got uh, with Lawrence Fishburne's character. I don't want to give too much away but with the backstory with his wife. It, you know, it's got a bit of Hitchcock's Rebecca in there. Rosemary's Baby. So, I mean. It's influences go all over the place. So kudos to you. You created a running great down my list, James. That's it. Oh. That is, is, <laughs> they, are, they were big touch points. Yeah, they were big touch points. I, I mean, you're, you're spot on. It's it is um, it is it is that thing. It's 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 finding. You know, we we really set out for the, to to sort of execute a, a sort of very contemporary version of a timeless story, and I, I'm right. sure that's a I'm sure lots of filmmakers say that to you all the time. But that was a sort of that was a real. For me as well, like, and I, I know for, for Craig and Sheila, the producers, that was a real sort of driving factor. Like, you know, like I, I know as a as a as an audience member, as a viewer, I, I love films like this. I love films that have that sort of central premise and have that sort of lean and mean quality to them where they 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 sort of drive straight through it. And you you talked about the telltale heart. Like, look at Poe. Like he his paucity of prose is amazing. He yeah. he like their novellas, they deliver. Look at Sorry, I'm going to geek out, but you know, but like, oh, it's, I, all I good. it's all good. It's all good. Look at Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Same thing. Like they they have that that intense, quick, rapid fire through line, and yeah, we we really wanted that for Celador. That that tight it. as well. What we we I always aim for it as a filmmaker, and we really did on Celador as well. Right. Okay. So with that being said, I have to ask: Was there ever a moment in time where you considered, you know, not to spoil too much, but did you ever consider showing definitively what was down in the cellar? I mean, it's alluded to throughout the movie, Scott Speedman's character, you know, Lawrence Fishburne, stuff like that. Was there ever a moment when you said, oh, no, we're just going to show it rather than leave it kind of open-ended at the end there? No. And no, I, okay. I think, no, no, no. And, and I think you're, it's, it's a, it's a great question for me. No, because I okay. think that the thing that attracted me to it is this idea of like, we all have a cellar door, right? Like in in our heads, in our dark heart of hearts, there's there's secrets and lies and moments that we all want to bury in our cellar and like lock the door and throw away the key. And I think that 
that for me was something that I really wanted to protect for cellar door because I think that I love movies that stay with us. Right. Like, and there is, there is something that, that the idea of having an audience, having that conversation afterwards, I found that really exciting. Right. Like, yeah, that idea that people would go out and be like, what was in the cellar for you? You know, like provoking that conversation, I find really exciting as a filmmaker. So I can genuinely say hand on heart. No, we never, we never wanted to, to reveal anything about what was in that. <laughs> I am glad to hear you say that actually, because I think the movie would have lost so much of its impact if you had have shown, you know, the, the monster behind the curtain or whatever like that. So I'm glad to hear you say that it wasn't even an option because, you know, I think it, I think it's much more powerful the way it is. So congratulations. Oh, I'm glad you think so. Yeah. Thanks. Mate. Yeah. And I think, I think it is that thing as well of like, like we really wanted to like, I never want to treat the audience disrespectfully. Like I, mm. I really love the idea, you know, they've, they've bought a ticket to a, a ride, right. They're on the roller coaster. And I think the idea of sort of leaving, leaving stuff opaque, leaving it purposefully obscure, like, we need to trust an audience to be intelligent enough to to make their own decisions to decipher it as they will and i think that's one of the things about cellar door that we it feels it feels elevated it feels elegant in that way yeah it does all right man vaughn just to wrap it up a little bit here um it, the film had an amazing cast i mean jordana brewster scott speedman lawrence fishburne just chat me up about kind of the vibe on set or how much fun you had working with these actors because they're all so, so talented and they brought, they, like you said, they elevated the picture so much. So how much, you know, what was it like on set, the vibe sort of between takes? Did you guys have a lot of fun? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So much warm and fuzzy and just, it was it was such a lovely place to be like Jordana and Scott, who obviously were with us, you know, that they were run a show. They was every day like, you know, they just had such great chemistry and they were they were so lovely with with the other cast, with the crew. They, they're very, very warm people. And what's so much fun is to watch them then put on their masks when they go on to set and just tear lumps out of each other. Right. And behave so duplicitously and so connivingly. And. They're, they're really warm, engaging people and they're so disciplined, they're so prepared. And, you know, it was very, it was a short, sharp shoot. And, you know, they they were line perfect, word perfect. They gave such variation in their performances. It was a real pleasure. And Jordana, like, you know, to, to take her first, like she just, there was, there was such depth, there was such nuance to her performance. And, you know, it's a very, it's a very twisty trail, like her character development. The, the arc she takes is is very unique and she just nailed it. She was so brilliant. And for Scott, you know, if you're looking at it on that kind of weird, what is it, X, Y graph, you know, you know, when she's going that way, he's going this way. And, you know, he, this, he's, 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 he's a lovely guy. Like he, he really bought this kind of very, as I said, like that sort of duplicitous, you know, the lies building up on top of each other, the deceit, the, you know, the, you know, an array of bad things happen to him. Like when he moves into the house, everything goes to pot for him. And, you know, he was able to kind of present like so much to the audience through like the flick of an eye or an exhalation. It was brilliant. And then you know, you've got Lawrence there, you know, like it was for us, Emmett was so important. Like, you know, he, he's designed to not have, too much time on screen that's sort of the beauty of of like the way the first act works like he needs right. to arrive with this bang and then disappear to haunt the movie yeah. and you know who better than Lawrence Fishburne to do that he's got <laughs> some gravitas and charisma and you know he is like we were talking earlier he has that sort of devilish quality but he's real he's this kind of eccentric billionaire who plays these these very dark games and he just had that sort of debonair suaveness this sort of the way he presented, like, you know, he, he, he nailed the brief. So, so perfectly. He was, he was the, the perfect incarnation of Emmett. Amazing. All right. One quick question before I go, I forgot to check out the, the credits. Usually I check out the credits after I watch a movie. Was that house, was that a uh, shot on location or was that a set? Cause it was gorgeous. It was shot on location. It was wow. shot in Portland, Oregon. We, we found this this amazing house. We were really sort of vacillating between going, you know, really leaning into genre and having that kind of sort of gothic, like kind of Baroque house on the hill or choosing something different. And we, myself, my brilliant DP, Michael Mera, and amazing designer, Angela, we, we, we saw this house and the producers, Craig and Sheen, were there and we kind of all looked at each other, like sort of side eye, like, well, this is it, <laughs> we're, we're in. Like, because it is, it's so contrived to say house is a character, but you know, but it oh, is like, yeah. it, it is so much happens in that sort of strangely claustrophobic mansion. And 
you know, it, it it means so much to those different characters. Sarah embraces it and blossoms in it and grows. And, you know, she's able to accept her Faustian pact, but John can't, you know, he, he, his life combusts spectacularly from the moment he moves in. And as we said, lies build on lies, deceit builds on deceit. And yeah, the house, it was amazing. It told its own story, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of, uh, the the house in the uh the changeling with george c scott sort of how it has that yeah. own you know and it's its own yeah. character yeah <laughs> yeah i was it's funny you say that's a really good reference i was thinking about winchester as well oh. remember the, the helen mirror because i mean obviously the house is is literally a character but that that it that sort of that's oppressive quality that it had that was that definitely sort of was was former that was very much foremost in my mind when we were scouting and when we sort of started designing that house that in one in one frame, it could be warm and inviting and sumptuous and 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 like a lovely place to sit in front of the fire and drink a glass of wine. And then all you got to do is like light it. I mean, it was lit beautifully by Michael, the DP, but, you know, like to frame it differently and to sort of change it to create a completely different feeling and tonal sense for another character. And that, I mean, I had an amazing set of department heads to do it, but the house definitely helped. <laughs> Amazing. Von Stein, thank you so, so much for your time today. today. Uh, Cellar Door, everywhere in November 1st. You made a heck of a film, man. I can't wait to see what you do next. I've been a fan of your work going back to Terminal, so I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. Thank you so, so much for your time today. Oh, James, that means the world. Thank you so much, mate. Lovely to meet you.